How do you create a Work Breakdown Structure, or WBS, for your project? I'm Tony Zink, and this is the Project Guide. Hi folks, Tony Zink here, project management author and trainer and creator of the Project Manifesto. I show people how to use tools and techniques to get better results faster on their projects, whether that means saving time, saving money, reducing risks, or providing a more stress-free and pleasant experience for everyone involved in the project. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing or following me on this channel. And if you're not tuning in directly on my website, TonyZink.com, then you can go there to get the video for this episode and others like it, the entire written transcript, and other goodies too. Have you, or someone on your project team, ever lost track of a critical deliverable that your team needed to produce for a project? Have you, someone on your team, or your customer ever had misconceptions about the meaning of a specific deliverable on a project you've worked on? Maybe you've been assigned to a large or complex project to run, but you and your team felt overwhelmed and you didn't know where to begin? Problems like these happen quite often on projects often because there's no clear definition of the set of deliverables that your team is responsible for. All too often, a project team is handed a project and they jump in feet first, maybe because there's a tight deadline or because the team thinks that they know what they need to do, or maybe they're just excited to get started. Jumping in without the right amount of planning, though, can be a recipe for disaster. One of the first exercises that I recommend every project team perform is creating a work breakdown structure or WBS for the project. The idea here is that if you can break down a large or complex end product into smaller components, then it should be easier for you to plan and manage the work required to produce each one of those components. Then when you assemble them all together, voila, you've completed the finished product for your customer. I'm going to show you a four step process that you can follow to build a work breakdown structure for your next project using Microsoft Word. And to make it a little more interesting to demonstrate the tools and techniques in this episode, I've created a fictitious scenario that's intended to mimic a real world project where you might need to do this. In this scenario, I'm a project manager working for a company called Zinc Industries, a world leader in electric transportation and infrastructure. I've been assigned a new project, codenamed Cliff Clavin, to design a new electric delivery van that local postal and parcel delivery services might use to deliver Amazon packages to your front door. Now, I've already worked with my customer to create a project scope document that contains things like overall objectives, desired outcomes, and key deliverables for this project. I'm gonna take those key deliverables from the scope document and use them as a starting point for my new work breakdown structure. Although today I'll be using Microsoft Word to demonstrate this exercise, you can use a number of different tools to build out a work breakdown structure for your project. So let me switch over to my computer screen and I'll get started. So here's a document that I'm using to create a work breakdown structure for my new project. It's organized into three sections, work breakdown structure diagram, outline, and dictionary. I'll start in the WBS diagram section of the document and I'll enter the key deliverables that I've already identified with my customer. This will form the initial structure of our WBS. I'll then insert the organizational chart smart art diagram into the document. I'll update the width of the diagram to fill the page. I'll clear out all the placeholders that Microsoft Word provides as a starting point, and I'll enter the key deliverables into the text box on the left side of the Smart Art diagram. Now, if you already have your key deliverables typed into a list like I do, then you can save yourself some typing by copying the list and pasting the key deliverables into the Smart Art diagram's left-hand text entry box. Finally, the key deliverables need to be organized hierarchically. So I'll add the vehicle end product to the top of the list in the text entry box. Then I'll indent the key deliverables to indicate a hierarchical relationship. You can indent them individually or you can select multiples and indent them together. If you need to create multiple levels of hierarchy in your diagram because your key deliverables are categorized into groups, then you can further indent some of the deliverables to create that hierarchy. I don't need the list of key deliverables in the document anymore, so I'll delete them. And now we have the top levels of our WBS, ready to be broken down into more detailed project deliverables. Now that I've got a starting point for my WBS, 
The next step is to break down these key deliverables into smaller, more manageable ones. So I'll click back into the Smart Art text entry box, and for each key deliverable in the hierarchy, I'll add more entries to represent its detailed components. Now, it can be a bit tedious to do this breakdown inside the small Smart Art text entry box, so I'll use another technique. I'll copy what I've entered so far into the entry box, I'll scroll down to the Work Breakdown Structure Outline section of the document, and I'll paste the entries that I copied from the diagram. Now I've got the same set of deliverables, still organized in a hierarchy, but now they're in a format that's a lot easier to work on. So now I can continue breaking down each of the key project deliverables into smaller, more manageable components. And each time I want to decompose any given deliverable into smaller components, I can indent one level further into the outline structure and add those smaller components at that deeper level. Once I'm done adding all the detailed component deliverables to the outline, I can just copy the entire new outline that I've created, scroll back up to the WBS diagram, and replace the contents of the Smart Art text entry box with the outline that I copied from down below. Now you can see that the diagram shows the new detailed set of deliverables from my outline. I've spent some time working with my project team to identify all the detailed deliverables that we'll need to produce for our project. And to save some time here, I've already built these deliverables into a detailed outline. So I'll go back down to the outline section of the document, I'll replace what's there with my new detailed outline, and I'll go back up to the diagram and once again replace the contents of the Smart Art text entry box. It's gotten so detailed now though that the diagram is nearly impossible to read, so I'll change the style of the diagram. If I pick the horizontal hierarchy diagram instead of the organizational chart diagram, we'll see that the breakdown now flows left to right rather than top to bottom. If I grab the handle at the bottom of the diagram and stretch it downward, I can take better advantage of the portrait layout of the page and I can read the deliverables in the diagram more easily. Another technique that you can use if your WBS diagram gets so detailed that it's difficult to read is breaking the diagram into multiple parts. Here's an example of the same work breakdown structure for my project with the same set of detailed deliverables represented using multiple smart art diagrams instead of just a single diagram. The first diagram shows the key deliverables at the top of the hierarchy and each subsequent diagram shows a further breakdown of each branch in the top level hierarchy. This allows you to make each diagram larger and easier to read, and you can spread these diagrams across multiple pages in your document. You can use smart art diagrams that flow left to right or top to bottom as I've done here. Once I've broken out all the deliverables for my project, I can assign unique WBS codes to each deliverable. If I go back to my WBS diagram and click into the Smart Art text entry box, I can enter a unique code at the beginning of each deliverable name listed there. When I'm numbering the items in a particular level of the hierarchy, I'll simply increment the numbers. And when I proceed from a deliverable at a higher level to another deliverable at a deeper or indented level, then I'll add more digits or characters to the code, making it longer. Essentially, I'm assigning an outline number or an outline code to each entry in the list kind of like a table of contents. Again, doing this kind of work inside the small smart art text entry box can be tedious, so I'll stop here and move down to the WBS outline to do my numbering. It's quite a bit easier to assign WBS codes in the outline, and it's easier to see if you've made mistakes. Unfortunately, although Microsoft Word has a feature that does allow you to automatically number the items in a list like this, you can't easily copy that numbering and transfer it back into the Smart Art diagram, so I'll just do my numbering manually. When I'm done with my numbering here, then I'll copy the updated outline, I'll scroll back up to the WBS diagram section of the document, I'll click back into the Smart Art diagram text entry box, and I'll replace its contents with my updated numbered outline. Now we can see that each deliverable shown in the WBS diagram has a unique WBS reference code. This will be useful later for cross-referencing the deliverables listed in the WBS diagram and the WBS outline with the same deliverables that we may mention in other places like a WBS dictionary or a project schedule. Speaking of a WBS dictionary, I'm going to move on and create one of those now for my project. In the last section of my document, 
I'll create a table that lists all the project deliverables along with a detailed description of each one. This should eliminate any confusion about what items we're delivering and what they mean. This table lists the level in the hierarchy, the unique ID code, the name, and a detailed description for each project deliverable. Since I've listed all the deliverables in the WBS outline section of the document, I'll split my Microsoft Word window into an upper and a lower panel. In the lower panel, I'll show my WBS dictionary table, and in the upper panel, I'll show the WBS outline. This will make it easier for me to populate all the deliverables into the table. The level, the code, and the name should be easy at this point, but you may need your team member's help with the detailed descriptions. Once again, I've spent some time working with my project team ahead of time to hammer out all these deliverable descriptions, and to save some time, I've already built out a full WBS dictionary table. So I'll replace the placeholder table that's already here with my completed table. And now we have a detailed listing of all of our project deliverables, including a detailed description of each one and a unique ID reference code that we can use to cross-reference this list with our WBS diagram, our WBS outline, a project schedule, or any other project document that mentions these deliverables. So to wrap this up, here are a few tips for you to remember when you're building a work breakdown structure for your project. First, remember to focus on concrete deliverables or outcomes rather than actions or tasks that will need to be completed. If your team is building a house, for example, then your WBS might include a deliverable such as a set of design drawings, but you wouldn't include a task in your WBS such as create design drawings or review design drawings with the client. These are examples of tasks that might be required to produce the design drawings deliverable. A WBS should contain things that your team will produce, not actions or tasks that they'll perform. Secondly, WBS codes should be unique for each deliverable in your WBS, but they don't need to follow a specific format. Just think of them like outline codes that you might find in a document or a table of contents. They can be letters, numbers, or any combination thereof. As long as your team understands the format and you use the same format in your WBS, in your project schedule, and anywhere else the project deliverables and their codes may appear. Finally, when you create a WBS dictionary, you can include not only a definition for each deliverable, but also other things such as the skills required to produce that deliverable, or maybe the functional team who will be responsible for producing that deliverable. So thanks for tuning in and spending this time with me. I hope that you've enjoyed these tips and that you find them useful. I'd like to take a quick moment and remind you of these two things. Number one, if you're not tuning in directly on my website, then you can visit my site at TonyZink.com. You can watch this video and others like it. You can read the entire written transcript and find other goodies there too. And number two, please post your thoughts down in the comments section. Do you have any questions, tips, or recommendations that you'd like to share? How do you handle situations like this? What are some other topics that you'd like to see in future episodes? Some of the best questions and tips come from folks like you, project management community, the people who are out there in the trenches every day working on projects. So definitely connect with everybody down in the comments section. And until I see you next time, go back out there and keep building great things.